Thank you, everyone, for joining in. So just a thumb up. How are you today right now? Good. Yeah? Can I have a thumb up or down if you're not very good? It's good to be honest. OK, so my topic here is about mindful leadership. And this topic has been going on in the world quite commonly everywhere. You know, mindfulness, what are we doing? A lot of CEOs are practicing it. So today, in the next 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to decode what all this terminology is. And there will be some information that you can take and practice, and some of those information will be a good reflection for you. You OK with it? OK, so before we move on to talk about the mindful leadership, let me give you a scenario. So here is my friend, Tim. Tim wakes up. He realizes he has missed on the alarm. It is 6.30, he is supposed to wake up at 6. He realizes he has four meetings, two of those meetings he hasn't prepared for. And he, his mind starts to rush in. He thinks, what am I going to do? Soon, he checks his phone, he realizes there is another meeting coming in. He also feels anxious about how he ate the cake that he had to have last night, he didn't want to have last night. And then he realizes he has to manage both his kids put them to, to dress and send them to school. And since then, his day starts rushing. Moving from the kids to the Uber driver to rushing from one meeting to the other. And that's my friend Tim. On the other side, I have Nadia. Nadia also wakes up, realizes she has missed the alarm. But when she wakes up, she just blesses herself a great day and feel gratitude for what's happening today. She realizes she has a lot of meetings to handle, but they have been handled already in her calendar. And then she goes to the room of the kids, hugs them, sits behind them, cuddle them, wake them up, get them ready, go to shower, singing in the shower, go to the Uber driver, sit in the cab, do some breathing exercises because she woke up late and want to make sure she's ready. Her first two hours of the, meet, of the day are fully planned that she's focusing on what she really wants to get done. And then the meetings can happen, because she knows that's the most important time of her day to get things done. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many of you relate yourself closer to Tim can raise your hands? Some of you haven't raised, that's fine as well. And how many of you think you're very close to how Nadia is? OK, great. And thank you for joining. What I want to share with you is it's all within us. And what we don't realize is our life is running on autopilot. Things are churning in and out of our mind daily. What's going on, coming out, we have no idea. You know, like if you buy a washing machine, you get a washing machine manual or a printer manual. And the biggest part of a body that we use is muscles or mind. What do we use the most? Our brain. And somehow, we do not have actually opened the manual and look, how does this mind operate? How can I make sure that I can handle my mind as I really want to? So let me give you an example. If you ask your hand to move up, it moves up, right? If you ask it to move down, it moves down. If you ask your mind to clap, it claps. But the biggest thing that we use in a body, a brain, you ask him to think about X, it thinks about Y. I'll tell you not to think about the blue elephant, you'll start thinking about the blue elephants. And what I want to tell you today is how you can decode all that stuff that's going on. So the first thing for us to know is that mindful stuff is all linked earlier to outside. Like when I grew up, my mom will say, uh, Manish, be mindful that you're going to the cousin's house, dress properly. And I got married to my Chinese wife on the Chinese tea ceremony. She'll say, be mindful of this cousin, this cousin, this cousin. But the mindful word now in the leadership space is focusing on not the external world, what's going around us, is looking at how can I be mindful of every single thing that's happening within me? My emotions, my thoughts, my mind, and my physiology as well. 
And when a person is able to look at that mind on a detailed basis, there comes the leadership. That leadership helps that individual to have more self-awareness of what's going on with him or her and create life with choices. And choices is a big word because when I have choices, I can do what I want to do. I can tell my mind to move up, move left, move right, move backwards. And when you have the choices, you will see some leaders have presence, they're smiling, they're joyful, they're connecting with other people, they have clarity, they have focus. And how do we generate that? And that's what I want to cover further with you. So the one thing that I want to share with you that this muscle that we have within our mind can be trained. It is all possible. Like we can train our muscles. When you get fitter, how do you feel? You feel confident. You feel more, um, ex you feel accepting of other people. When you build your body, when you build your muscles, if you build your mind muscles, there is a higher possibility you feel more present, more focused, more connected, more compassion, more love toward yourself. So when I talked about mindful leadership, it's all about creating choices. And there is a good quote that I want to share with you from Viktor Frankl. If you have heard of him, a Holocaust survivor, he says, between stimulus, whatever happens, and a response, there lies a space. In that space is a power to choose our response. In our response lies a growth and a freedom. In that response lies a growth and a freedom. And I can guarantee you, if you practice what we are sharing here, you will see a bigger gap between what's the stimulus and what's the response you're giving to your life, to your wife, to your kids, to your parents, to your boss, to people around you. If that would have been very easy, you know, life would have been great. All of us would be smiling, joyful, happy, and connected. But there are a lot of barriers, you know, like when you go for bodybuilding, what are the barriers we face? Oh, I slept Layla, I am eating so badly, I can't break my habit, it doesn't work, I'm still 80 kgs or 90 kgs or 100 kgs. We have lots of barriers. And similarly, our mind program has three big barriers that I want to share with you. The first one is cognitive agitation. Cognitive agitation is that your mind keeps going on and on and on. The second one that you see here is your monkey that sits in your brain, and we will talk about it. And the third one is the auto programs that are running in a mind. So let me share with you all the three barriers that we have that stops us to lead how we want to lead. The first one is cognitive agitation. When I grew up in India, we had two channels. How many from India here? Two channels, Doordarshan, 7 a.m. it starts, 11 p.m. we close. Now we have thousands of channels. I have Netflix at home. I have WhatsApp here. I have notification here. Whatever I'm feeding in, in one week, our ancestors used to do that in their whole life. They used to do that in their whole life, what we're putting in our brain. And what happens here is, it's like a, in mind, if always agitated, it becomes a neurochemistry that you're always seeking to check your WhatsApp. You're always seeking for the stimulation. So just to be aware, there is a lot of cognitive agitation going on in our brain. And that stops us to really find happiness. The second thing is our friend who we grew up with. And this is a small monkey sitting in our head. And this monkey we cannot get rid of. It's always with us. In technical term, we call it amygdala. But this amygdala, what does it do? He's just there sitting in our brain and watching out for <coughs> danger. Because the first thing that he is interested in is around survival. How can I make Manish survive to live the life as he want to? And this monkey is always catching for the negative things that are going around him. All the emotions, your anger, your frustrations, your when you get angry in the past, when you pick up the chocolate, when you had the cravings, this monkey is storing all of that and sitting there. And when you make a decision, it passes through this monkey. And when it's passed through, you can make a response. Does it make sense? So it passes through the monkey and you can make a decision. Now this monkey has responses of, am I going to fight, am I going to flight, or am I going to freeze? And as soon as it sees the danger, it jumps up 
and make you not do what you want to do. If you see the chocolate and the cravings come up, because craving is a feeling, it stops you to do what you really want to do. And the biggest part is that this monkey is five times more powerful than your real brain, the prefrontal cortex, PFC, that you really want to work with. So what we need to know is, how am I going to control this monkey? And the third thing is, we have a hardware in a brain, a different part of the brain that stores everything. So whatever you did, whatever you felt, is in your brain, cognitively restored. And this programmer is telling you what to do, what not to do, how you make decisions. And these three things, I want you to remember, are shaping how we lead our life. And if I want to practice mindfulness and mindful activity, I need to handle all these three things. Otherwise, every day, how we are living a life is going to be through this dirty window pane. The more agitation you have, the more your monkey is agitated, the more your programs are dirty, we cannot have a happy, fulfilling, a mindful life. To live life with passion, courage, presence, connection, compassion, love. And we are going to see how we are going to code that out. So, what are the building blocks? Like, why people are doing mindfulness? Why are you doing this focus, meditation? What is happening here? So the first thing is, if you want to take a note, there are two strategies that you're going to do is to block these agitations happening. The first one is, I'm going to manage my monkey. So tell yourself after the session today, I'm going to manage my monkey. The second thing you're going to do is, I'm going to understand what's this programmer doing in my brain. And the third thing is, I'm going to build my muscle of my prefrontal cortex. Yeah? I'm going to manage my monkey, I'm going to manage my programmer, and I'm going to build the, brain, build the muscles of my prefrontal cortex. So let's see how we can do that. To manage your monkey, the one which is jumping around and is a gateway to what you're making decisions with, it also has a negative side. And the negative side is, he cannot live when there is a gap. So, how many times you had an impulse to eat that chocolate, or buy that dress, or shout at your wife, or your kids? That emotion come up of anger, or fear, or greed, or jealousy, or cravings. If you create the gap of just two breaths, breathing in and out, breathing in and out, that takes about six seconds. In that six seconds, this monkey loses the power. Because chemical response of an emotion within the amygdala rise, falls down within those six seconds. You know, when you move forward from the window and you don't pick up the dress or you don't shout at your kid, this emotion response is gone. This monkey is shut. And what my offer to you is, find that space of those six seconds. Is that clear? The second thing, what you need to do is how you understand the programmer. This programmer is always thinking, not here. He is thinking, what I did in the past, which was helpful, what should I do in the future that should be helpful? And this programmer has two big questions that is always asking. If only, if only I didn't shout at my wife, if only I was more present in the meeting with my CEO, if only I could have celebrated that event with joyfulness. If only I was more present in the HR summit. If only I could do this report on time. Beating you up all the time so that you can make better decisions. And that's not a reflection. This monkey or this programmer is running all the time. The second thing this programmer is doing is saying, what if, what if I was six kgs lesser weight? What if I was the CEO? What if I can make things happen in this life? What if I have million dollars? And making you go towards all that what ifs. So if I need to decode this programmer, I need to catch the language of when he says what if, and when he says if only. And if you want to do that, there is a way that you can bring your muscles of the brain back to the present, so that question of what if, if only, doesn't remain a hold on your life. Is that clear? Okay, so the simple practices that are available all around the world, around the mindfulness, the biggest one is breathing. It doesn't mean that you have to be breathing meditation. You can meditate on me. You can focus on me as your mind wander, you can come back on me. Or you can focus on anything else. 
If you focus on money, it will always keep thinking about what about money? What about what did I lose on money? So we're going to do a small practice for one minute. I would like you to just sit back, put all the things from your lap somewhere else, if you can put it on the floor. And you're going to do a very quick mindfulness activity. And in this activity, there are three steps. You focus your attention on your breath. If your attention is wandering somewhere else, you acknowledge the current focus of your attention and redirect attention to your breath. We're going to do it only for one minute. Yeah? So clo close your eyes. I invite you to close your eyes. If you can put your hands on your laps and just focus on your legs, how you feel the legs on the floor and slowly move your attention to your breath. Feel the air going through your nostrils and coming out of your nostrils. If mine goes somewhere else, bring it back to your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. If mind wanders, just bring your attention back to your breath. Okay, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, still here? Okay, just give me a thumbs up if you're still here. Okay, fantastic. So what did we do here? What we did here is just making sure that we lower down our breathing, activated a parasympathetic system in our body, psycho physiologically, and that activated your prefrontal cortex. So the gateway that is going towards the monkey and towards your prefrontal cortex is much bigger and broader. And then you can focus and decision on who you love, who you want to focus on, and the hold of the if only and what if takes a lesser hold. So those people who are doing mindfulness and meditation, if they do it for four or five years, they'll realize, oh, OK, la, it's OK. It's just an Uber driver. It's no problem. I didn't win that lottery. It's fine. What, what happens is that the gateway is more broad. Yeah. The second, the third thing you can remind yourself is all these things happening through our monkey and through our programmer is just created by them. Because you, as a leader, is you are not your thoughts, and thoughts are not you. I feel my emotions and I am not my emotions. But what we say to ourselves all the time, I'm hungry, I'm guilty, I'm frustrated. And if you just shift your language on, I am feeling angry, I am feeling guilty, I'm feeling craving, I'm feeling lonely. And you say, I am thinking this way or I am not this way, it also loses the hold on you. So a mindful leader is very careful of how he creates the passageway very clear and what is he or she saying to himself. And the third part is very important, is, OK, I can stop all this noise that's going on in my brain. How do I build on my muscles that I really want to build? And that can be built on. So how many of you have heard of neuroplasticity? It's a very common term in learning language. So if this is your brain, if you lift weights, you can build your muscles here, right? You can build, lower your fat. Similarly, if you focus on something, what you think, do, and pay attention to change the function and structure of your brain. So if you focus on certain things, there are certain pathways in your brain that gets activated or broadened up. It becomes like a highway. If you keep thinking of something negative, that also becomes a highway because they combine. So in an example here, which is talked a lot around in mindfulness and meditation area, is example of London driver. How many are from UK or know about what happens in London? You have black cabs. And in the black cab, we have a black driver. He goes through a test for four, maybe two years, some people take four years, to understand and remember all the roads in their head, because they're not allowed to use GPS. And what they noticed is, after a driver has been found driving on the road for four or five years, the hippocampus of their brain is much 
thicker and stronger. That means they have remembered all the pathways of where the Charing Cross is, King Cross is, London Victoria is, and they can go without the GPS. And because of that, the hippocampus pathway is much more stronger. And they have built the pathway. Now, in the meditation and mindfulness activity, people say you should write your journal, you should write emotional log. Why are we doing that? Because what you focus on grows. There's a lot of science behind it. I don't want to spend more time on it. Go and Google and search neuroplasticity. Go and search what you focus on, why it grows. You know, there's a secret book where people talk about it. You should. It's not that. It's more around what pathways am I creating in my life. So if I had to build my muscles of my mindfulness, of my, of my brain, I'm going to do is just two things. First is, this monkey and programmer is always beating me up. Always. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, and you're not good enough. What you're going to build the muscle, first muscle is of self-love. So you wake up and should say to yourself, what are you happy about? Or what are you intending to achieve in this day? At the end of the day, what are you contented about? And give yourself that love, because if you don't get a good feedback from your bosses, or if you don't perform, that feedback is once, but it runs in your brain for the next 25 minutes. Because you keep beating yourself. And if we build the muscle of beating ourselves, our confidence, presence, everything goes away. And the second thing is compassion. So we don't find compassion for ourselves, but we can find compassion for other people. And find courage to give that love to other people. So it's time for me to close. And before we close, just close your eyes for half, just close your eyes and think about what are the one thing that I want to acknowledge about myself in the last 24 hours? What is the one thing I want to acknowledge myself on for the last 24 hours? And if I have to give gratitude to one person in my life or people I have met in the last 24 hours, what would that be? When you're done, you can open your eyes. And this you can do on a daily basis. You don't even have to move the muscles. Go to Fitness First, Virgin Active. You can make it happen anytime, any day. Thank you, guys. It was great to have you here. I hope you enjoyed. I know you take something from here.